Ah. So when I was at uh, the Easter vigil, well, there's no real vigil, you know, the Easter vigil for the Western Church where they light the candle, which symbolizes Christ. Anyone go to that for Easter, the first Mass of Easter, they light the candle? Did they actually do like the nine readings as they're supposed to, or did they only do a few, like three or four? Zone out. One of these days, I'm going to go to the. I'm going to tell the pastor, I will give you a hundred dollar bill if you will do the full readings. There's only one night of the year where there is an extensive, like nine readings. There used to be more on em, what were called Ember Days, but they don't have Ember Days anymore. The church just asks one night of the year, you know, beginning with the book of Genesis, going through the sto- question. Sure. Um, because with Genesis goes through the whole history, basically the history of salvation, in a way, through the scriptures. And each reading is followed by a prayer by the priest and a psalm. And a, I have yet to see it fully done. I have not, I'm sure the Pope in Rome does it. They probably do it in the cathedral. Not my, I, you know, never. Just don't. Because some of the readings are optional, so people are lazy. And that's what it is. It's just absolute, complete schlock laziness. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Super Bowl. When do they start coverage of the Super Bowl now? Like six hours ahead? Not even. And the Super Bowl is at least like three hours. I think that if someone can sit through a mindless thing like that, for me it's mindless, but no, I mean, you can sit through that. And all you have to do, think of it, all you have to do is sit. They don't even ask you to do anything. In the Eastern Church, for like on Good Friday, we had to prostrate ourselves like 25 times. And prostrate, I mean like if you're ever doing like those crunches where you go down and on the ground, you put your face on the ground, you know, it's like 25 times, man. That's callous, that's some uh, athletics, man. Ah, uh, I'll tell you, my stomach was hurting after that. I was sore. Okay. Crucifixion. Let's get to the good stuff. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling death by death, and to those in the tomb, granting life. That's the song of Easter in the East. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. And that's the greed, the greetings of the week, or the weeks of Easter, actually. Easter continued until Pentecost, 50 days later. So, you know, the greeting is, Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Well, how did he get to the grave in the first place? The proof is different. Oh, it's over the last. Hmm? Huh. A crook? A chair, a spatio, to make a cross. Very simple. The act of making a cross. As I said, that was um, one of the ways that uh, the Romans would execute. Not Generally, Roman citizens, though, um, if you're a Roman citizen, um, if you're going to be executed, typically you had your head chopped off, 
That was considered the merciful punishment. This crucifixion hanging on a cross was reserved for non-Romans, for slaves, for lowlifes, really the dregs of society. Jesus was a non-Roman, so he at least qualified for that. Um, as I was talking about crucifixion, you have a stake in the ground, and then the criminal or whoever is going to be crucified carries what's called the patibulum, that's sort of up there, this Latin word patibulum, the beam, I'll just say the beam, the piece of wood that you're going to tie the person to, or nail the person to, or both tie and nail the person to, and you know, hoist them up there somehow, and fix them onto the pole. I mean, the pole would be freestanding, usually wouldn't move it around, because you're going to probably use it again. The Roman, you know, excuse me. Over the head of the person, you would normally put the charge, <coughs> the reason that the person is being crucified, the crime the person committed. This, uh, in Latin, this is called the titulus. Tit <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of like the cock crow, you know. Uh, I would do it in mine, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Wasserman. Anyway, the titulus. The title, as we would say in English, the title, um, and we see this done with Jesus of Nazareth. Nothing unusual. Um, if you read the Gospel of Mark, what does it say the title is of Jesus? What's placed over his head? What does it say? Simply the King of the Jews. The King of the Jews. Okay? And yes, you can take this as a statement of faith that I believe that Jesus is, what Mark is trying to say to us, I believe he's the king of the Jews, or that Jesus really is the king of the Jews. We're seeing a little bit of irony there. Um, but for the Romans, it was simply his charge. He claimed he was a subversive. You know, he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Well, there was no king of the Jews. That was, they didn't have a king. Their overlord was the Roman emperor. And like King Herod, if they did have a king, the Romans would install him. You wouldn't have some guy just show up from Galilee saying, hey, I'm the king, you know? So that was the charge. So that's completely historically accurate that they, that they did this. Um, they put the charge over his head. This is the king of the Jews. Other, some other things, like you can, well, they don't have it on the cross over there, um, but you'll, you'll see it always on Eastern crosses, you might, if you ever see it, it'll drive by like an Eastern Orthodox church or sometimes you'll see the cross with, oh, I have to remember now because it's the reverse, uh, like this. Anyone ever seen that? Some people have. Do you know what it is? No? Anyone want to take a guess? Take a guess? Yes? Well, I always that, I didn't realize that the beam was already in the ground. I, I thought that, like, I don't know, he was weighed down and then they lifted him up with the cross. So, yeah, that's a good, yeah. I'm assuming that they put his feet while they're tying him. Okay, they probably didn't lay him down and hoist him up because, as I said, the, the pole would have been in the ground already. Yeah. And it would have just been less efficient to have to take the pole out, lay it down, crucify the person, and then put it r back, write it again. Um, but no, but you've actually arrived at the correct interpretation, the footstool. It's called, you know, the, a footstool for someone to stand on. And you'll always see this on Eastern Church, on Eastern, um, for the Eastern version of the cross, the Latin version, as it's called, for the Roman Catholics, they do not have this, they just have the up and the down. Uh, but this is traditional. We have nothing is mentioned in the Gospels about Jesus having a footstool. He may have had one. We know the Romans did sometimes do that. They would give a footstool for someone to stand on while they're on the cross. But that was not an act of mercy. It was to prolong their suffering on the cross. So they would have some leverage to keep themselves alive longer. And hence feel pain longer. It was not an act of 
oh, they're being nice to someone. Okay? Um, the fact that they, uh, well, so Jesus might have had a footstool. There's just no way to confirm it. Uh, the fact that he was nailed to the cross says that he was a special character because you could simply tie someone to the cross and the effects of gravity would have the same, or gravity would have the same effect on the body of eventually killing the person. Either that or starvation, but usually you suffocate first. Um, so the fact that Jesus was, uh, was uh, nailed, the fact that he was whipped, that was not an everyday occurrence for someone who was put on the cross. Uh, the fact that that could be, in a weird way, an act of mercy because you whip the person so they feel more pain, but also, you know, it also the loss of blood and the pain from the whipping would uh, maybe make them die sooner. Yeah. So that, you know, whatever. We know the Romans rip, whipped, and apparently Jesus was whipped. Um, so that's what I want to say. Uh, no, I don't want to say that because i got a whole little details here. Some of them are interesting to me, but might just be wasting time. Uh, I mentioned that. I mentioned that. Okay. This picture that I have here is uh, the earliest representation that we have of what appears, what we can extrapolate, is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. However, Mr. Scriptunus, Scriptunus, I see all. I've got four eyes, Mr. Scriptunus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mr. Skiptunis, why do you think... Oh, this is a picture of the crucifixion of Jesus, but it is not done, probably not done, by a believer in Jesus, a Christian. Why do I say that, sir? He has the head of an animal. Some kind of horse-like animal. Could be a donkey, an ass, a horse can't totally tell it's in the eye of the beholder but it certainly is not a dog it's probably not a dog's head um, yeah because it has a mane, has the horse mane up top so um, if you can see that on the top of the head and the neck so it's probably yes some kind of equine as his head rather than a human head which seems to be in jest I mean I don't know that someone would do that seriously, you know, um, seems to be making fun of the crucifixion rather than saying this is something to be venerated and honored. Then we got a little, and this, this is a little etching of a man, of a man looking, apparently looking up at the figure on the cross. This is a, well, this is a graffito when you have a a picture, Ms. Romanowski, that is painted or etched on into a wall. It's called a graffito from Italian. When you have more than one, plural, graffiti as an Italian. Yes? Yes, Ms. Wilgen. Uh, oh, we're getting there, Ms. Wilgen. Don't you worry. In fact, let me see if I can. Ta-da. There we go. Um, so there's an etching here on the graffito on this wall. It dates, it's been dated to 200 AD. So it's, you know, pretty early. There we are. And even though, I think this was found in Rome, remember the language of education was not, people spoke Latin as an everyday language, but it was not the language of education. It would be taught in Greek. So these are Greek words here, okay? And it's called the Alexa Menos graffito because well, you'll see in a moment. Let's see if I can find it. There you go. Get ready, Scavelli and Goldberg. I, think, uh, I can't tell if it's... There should be another one somewhere. But anyways. Where's the other E?
Whoops. Sign on there. And then. Okay. Can you see it? Not really. Who said not really? Come up, there's the Lacula. But if we had one board, something like that, uh, there we go. Okay, you're on, my friend. <coughs> oh, you're, oh, wait a second. We've got some ladies here who are also in. Back to you. All right, there you go. So, all right, we got an alpha, yes? Can you read that for me? Okay, well, what is an alpha in English? What does it look like? What do you think lambda is? An L. What do you think an epsilon is? An E. So you've got Aleph, those three lines. What are they? The letter? The letter? As in xenophobe as in xylophone, yes. what other, <coughs> anybody else in a fraternity or sorority, yes sir, oh, fraternity X, Psi, Psi, we got Alpha again, uh, Alpha again, which is, A, we got another Lambda, L, now, see here. Yeah, the M is a little bit, the moo is a little bit funky there. Um, but it's a, just take my word for it, it's a moo. Okay? Uh, remember Revenge of the Nerds when they had a party with moo? Where they met the moo? Well, no, I, I had that moo. I was in junior high school, so I had a moo that like, totally memorized. It was dressed like a nerd. I want to be one of them. Hey, gentlemen. Ah, so, then we have another epsilon. What's after epsilon? Goldberg. What's, uh, what's after epsilon? Nu. And after nu? Omicron. Thank you, sir. And then what's that C there? What's the C? This might thrill you. Hi, no, sir. What do you think it is? If it's the Alexa Menos Graffito, yes. No, it's not S. No, it's not C. We're dealing with Greek here, sir. The Greek alphabet. Not the, not the Roman alphabet. Nope. Don't. He gave the right answer, he just has the wrong alphabet. Psi. 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 Yes. Psi. It's not a capital. I don't know what psi is. I know what psi is. You got something for me, Mr. Barone? Sigma. Sigma. That's how you write a sigma. It's a C. <laughs> it's a C. Another epsilon. What's the next one, Mr. Uh, Scavelli? What's after the epsilon? Where? Which one? Well, we got sigma, sigma, epsilon. Beta. Beta, good, which is a B. Another epsilon, then what else? Tau. Tau, an epsilon. And then what's the next letter? Theta. Theta, epsilon, omicron, and nu. So now you can pronounce these things, right, Ms. Nichols? Pronounce it for me, please.
Because we, I, I already primed you for it. We went alpha means A, lambda means L, E is E is, you know. So you already know this is Alex, this is a sound, Alexa Menos. Scanio? What letter is it? Sabete. Theta, A, Epsilon, Omicron, Nu. Fe, Theon. Which means what, Mr. Sheldon? What does it mean, Mr. Sheldon? Uh, <laughs> Ms. Okay, hold on, Ms. Tannis. They all means God. They means God. God. Alexa Menos. What does Alexa Menos mean, Ms. Patel? Huh, Ms. Patel? Alexa Menos. Where are you, sir? There you are. Uh, please do. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's the dude's name! Alexa Menos! Alexa Menos. It's the dude, the guy's name that I showed you. That's Alexa Menos. It's the dude's name. Which might have a meaning, which I don't know what it is. I'd have to look it up. Okay? So, Alexa Menos, something fit on God. God. You wouldn't know this word um, because it's a Greek word, and I can't think of any English term that it, we have in English that would come from this word. But, sabe, um, i trying to think of what the, the verb would be in its original form. Sabeo. Uh, I don't want to give it to you and be wrong. Not just because that would be embarrassing, but I'd also have to correct it. Well, you know what? Yeah, it means to worship, to uh, to offer worship to. Sebeo. To offer worship to. So roughly translated, and the Greek here isn't very good actually. So, the person writing this probably it was a second language um, says Alexa Menos worships his God, roughly translated, worships his God. So even the statement on the uh, graffito is mocking, mocking, mocking this guy who is offering worship apparently to this man, this crucified human, part human, donkey-headed creature. So probably not a Christian, because <laughs> it implies that the person is not Alexa Menos, making fun of Alexa Menos. What's the purpose of the donkey head? To mock. Yes, yeah, because it's a stupid animal. It's, it's not, it's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have a great reputation, you know, it's a pack animal. So it's not something that, you know, you pride yourself in. Um, a really helpful dictionary online, Perseus Project. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Perseus at Tufts University. I forget what Tufts is. Yeah, so I didn't want that. I don't want to research through this. Uh, because I have it bookmarked on my computer, I don't, because it has the Latin and Greek dictionary. It's for ancient resources, as you can maybe see. So it's an excellent resource if you're interested in classics. And it has online a Greek dictionary. Oh, 
maybe I did that wrong. No, I did it right. Is that epsilon? Nah. All right, I'll have to look it up. I'm going to waste time now. Okay, just take my word for it. Set, whoa. How do I know that Alexa Menos is worshiping his god? Because, if you notice, you notice his, oh, you can't see my pointer, but notice his arm here is raised up like this. Raised up like this. The Roman, the Roman salute, it's not the Nazi salute, but we see people do this, okay? It's not Nazis. The Nazis got it from the Romans. It was a symbol of fascism. In Italy, they did the same thing with Mussolini. They did this. All right, because they were fascists. They were imitating the Roman Republic. And in, Roman, in their culture, in Roman culture, um, to uh, show honor when, you, when someone came in who was honorable, let's say to Caesar, you'd say, Hail Caesar! Charming. So what's the then off is hailing this image of the crucified man. We used to do this in America. Does anyone know when we used to give the supposed quote unquote Nazi salute? Anyone remember? You want to have like grandparents or great grandparents old enough to remember? No? Anyone want to take a guess? Uh, down there in Brazil, Mr. Rivero, that neck of the woods. We know in the jungles. I've seen the movies. They kept like, it kept like Hitler's brain in a bat. See those horror movies? You know? <laughs> you know, they kept Hitler's brain and brought it down to Brazil with some mad scientist and tried to put it into like some Frankensteinish monster. <laughs> done it probably a few hundred times in your life. Huh? Pleasure to leave. Yeah. The original Pledge of Allegiance was a call that, but the original form was if there were a flag in the room, so there's a flag over there, you say, I pledge allegiance, and I say, to the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, <coughs> liberty and justice for all. Only when we went to war with Germany, actually I shouldn't say that, in the 1930s, when Germany started, you know, doing what it did, <laughs> we decided that maybe this salute wasn't appropriate, so we kept the allegiance, but we took away, you find it, just, you know, Type into Google, Pledge of Allegiance Nazi Salute, and you'll get tons of pictures of little children standing there, black, white, yellow, old people, young people, going, hey, <laughs> to the flag. But they're not, they're not doing it to Hitler, they're doing it to the American flag. <laughs> Why? Because people are hepped up about classical civilizations, and they want to imitate them. That's why we are a republic. We were supposed to be imitating not the English parliamentary system, we wanted to go back to ancient Rome. If you've ever been to Washington, D.C., why do all our stuff look like these temples? We want to go back to the ancient world. Roman Republic, Pledge of Allegiance, 23 Skidoo, Heil Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, the Roman sign of, you know, hailing someone that you respect. So that's what Alexa Menos is doing. He's not a Nazi, okay? <laughs> Even if the Nazis don't, you know, respect that, you know? Like. So if you're ever walking down South Orange and a bunch of skinheads are holding a rally and we're all doing this and say, oh yeah, I like Roman civilization too. Right on. Hell Caesar, baby. <laughs> Just like, well, okay. <laughs> Trying to make a joke about Satanists, but I'll move on. Alexa Menos. So, 
Interesting. Now look, looky, looky, looky. Dr. Dunn found a cook. Footstool. Footstool. So either it's a very old tradition that Jesus had a footstool, which the Eastern Church has preserved, or it was just a common thing. It was a common thing. So the person just assumed that that's how they crucified him. Also, um, I don't know what the Y is up there for. That could be an upsilon, but that's another form of crucifixion the Romans. I don't know what that, was, that etching is for. So it's making fun of this man who was crucified, which was absolutely, was, you know, is not, not in any way um, unsurprising because the problem for, from a Jewish standpoint was that Jesus was crucified. It was, a, it was a, a shameful way to die. And if Jesus, from a Jewish standpoint, a believing Jew, God would not let that happen to the Messiah. That was just the assumption that the Messiah was supposed to be a glorious figure, a savior figure, yes. And God simply would not allow that to happen. So that's from the Jewish perspective. So, from the Greek and Roman perspective, it was, it was nonsense. It was complete it was stupidity that you had this group of people worshiping a crucified man because, as I said, it was the fate of criminals and slaves, the fate of people who were society's rejects, and it was not, so it was not a selling point. And I mean, nowadays, of course, with Christianity, people are like, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus and you know, they may, you know, people revel in the fact of the cross, but it was not, it wasn't, and I'm not saying Christians didn't uh, have a, an appreciation for reverence for what Jesus, you know, Jesus did on the cross, his death on the cross, even if they didn't have it completely 100% figured out what that meant for Christianity. But even the early disciples looked at it as a failure. You know, none of them came running to the cross to see Jesus die. They all wanted to get as far away from where Jesus was when he was crucified as possible. And it was not a selling point. Because for the Romans, it was idiotic. You, you want me to believe in this crucified man. You know, not a glorious hero. Not a Hercules. Not a Perseus. A Persepolis. You know, all these great heroes. Okay, you want me to believe in this, this guy who got himself killed. And not even killed in a glorious way. You might have, you know, kind of like, maybe if you're like a Viking, you know, you die gloriously in battle and go to Valhalla, because that's what Valhalla is. It's, the, it's the, like the abode of those killed in battle, the brave, the valiant. If you've ever been to a Richard Wagner opera, you know what I'm talking about. Four hours and 30 minutes, baby, with three intermissions. <laughs> I did it once. I will never do it again. And I like opera, but I hate Richard Wagner. <laughs> I don't like one of his operas because the dude could not write an opera that was not like eight hours long. Awful. I just couldn't... Uh, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, how long is this going to be? Uh, four and a half friggin' hours? <laughs> you know, so I slept through the last hour and a half. I just, I was like passive aggressive. I'm like, I'm going to sleep. I don't care anymore, you know? Anywho. So you have to disentangle or disconnect how Christians today might feel about the cross and, and love the Holy Cross. I mean, Christ, you know, the Catholic Church, Eastern churches, he crosses all over the place. But it was not a selling point. But it was true. I mean, they couldn't deny it, that that's what happened to their master. He did not, he did not leave this world as a success. He left the world as a failure, apparently. Who killed him? Another question. Who killed Jesus? Oops. Where am I here? Oops. Why did 
did Jesus die? That's another question. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Those big fluffy hats, I was just surprised. <laughs> I love these hats. And they get bigger, believe it or not. These hats get bigger. <laughs> Actually, I had to go on the internet and ask some, or look up, you know, why do certain Jewish groups, usually I'll see, um, wear these huge, conical, furry hats? Is it required? You know, is it a yarmulke enough? You know, keep it. What's going on there, you know? And apparently it's like a tradition for, a custom for like weddings and very special Sabbath and very special holidays, you know? Okay, I got it. But I always see it, you know, and it, I don't know, it just looks like a big, you know, black marshmallow. <laughs> I don't know, a Jewish s'more. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> All right, well, anyway. <laughs> um, why are they dressed like 16th century Polish Jews? Well, because that's where their movement originated. And, like, well, I should say 17th century Poland. From the 1600s, the Hasid movement starts in Eastern Europe. Okay, and they're kind of like the version, the Jewish version of the Amish. Um, they still dress like Jews from Warsaw, Poland in the 1600s. I don't know why they have to, but they do. And so, you know, they wear the coats, the hats that people would have worn back then. I don't know, you can't really see it, but they should be also wearing the prayer shawl um, all the time. Usually Jew, Jewish men will you cover their heads with their prayer shawl in the synagogue, but for Hasidic Jews and some Orthodox Jews they wear them all the time. It must be brutal in the summer. I mean, I couldn't follow this. This is, you know, I mean, they got the beards. Okay, I got, they got that. I'll give them that. They've got beards. Um, food, kosher food, not as good as Indian food. Okay? But they do have beards. So that's a check. Um, like house hunter, you know, check. And eh, check. Eh. But where they lose me is wearing this in summertime because I just don't like the heat. <laughs> I just can't. There's no way I can do this. Okay. Now, ooh, what do we got there? Free Palestine and Israeli occupation. Uh oh. What kind of Jews are those? <laughs> What kind of Jews are those? Let's get Jews. Huh? I don't think so. I think actually they're a picture of them protesting in New York City. Protesting. Skabale! Russian Jews. Russian Jews, you can tell. The Russian Jews wear them. They do? Just the Russian Jews? Not all Jews? I don't think so. Just no, they See? You're a helpful man, sir. Thank you. <coughs> well, I said Eastern Europe, so I covered myself. I covered part of the Russia. <coughs> now they're, they're not all Jews are quote unquote Zionists, as they say, believers in the state of Israel. There are Jews who oppose the existence of the country of Israel. They don't want it to exist. And some of these people because of this, <laughs> ally themselves with, like, the Palestinians. Even though, look at them, they are Hasidic Jews. They are observant Jews in every way. Very strict in their following of Judaism. But they cannot accept the existence of Israel. Why? Why? Are they anti-Semites? They're Jews. Come in, the anti-Semites. They're Jews. I could be an anti-Semite. If I were out there with a the sign, you know, push Israel into the ocean. I, you know, that's an anti I'd be an anti-Semite, but they're like, they're full ethnic Jews. No? I want to wager it here. You would like the separation of the monarchs with the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah and like the Interesting. Interesting. You're onto something. 
more so with the southern kingdom of Judah, drawn to something, something having to do with Judah and King David, who was the king of Judah, Jerusalem. Something that was mentioned before about the charge brought against Jesus. Well, they're not Christians. These are not Jews for Jesus. <laughs> Jews for Jesus are usually Protestant Christians who take over Judaism and then say they're Jews for Jesus. The Messiah. The Messiah hasn't come yet. Only the Messiah can restore the kingdom of Israel. Only the Messiah. If the Messiah has come. If he hasn't, there cannot be a state of Israel. So it's on religious principle they reject the existence of a country called Israel. Because only the Messiah can do that. That's one of the signs that he's the Messiah. Why do they reject Jesus? Jesus did not reestablish the actual kingdom of David. He didn't establish a throne and a monarchy. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. He didn't preach the kingdom of Judah. Okay, so these are present day Jews. Well, how could they have killed Jesus? They're here now. You know? And look at them. They're adorable. Those big beards. The guy looks like Grandpa. You know? Sitting on his knee, learning Torah. Come and listen, my child. Come and listen. I'll teach you Talmud. So, obviously, Jews today did not have any sort of participation in the death of Jesus. Oh, okay, well. What about Jews in the time of Jesus? Forget about the evil Jews. Forget about Jews from a long time ago, even, because they weren't there either. What about Jews from the time of Jesus? Aren't they to blame? Jews who were there. Last time I checked, she's a Jew. She was a Jew. This young woman. It's Mary, by the way. <laughs> In case you don't know what picture it is, it's not Lakshmi, it's Mary, okay? Just for some of you. Uh, as far as I know, last time I checked, she was the daughter of Israel. I don't, I don't think she was like, His blood be upon me! Sorry, son. <laughs> you know? Or these dudes, 12 apostles, but most of them, as far as we know, they were all Jews. They were all Jews. I don't think I have any more pictures than that one. So this is something that has to be addressed because it does come up every now and then. Remember, it was the Romans that put Jesus on the cross, which is why I always say the Italians that killed Jesus. So on Good Friday, I go out and I find some Italian and punch him in the nose. You killed Jesus, Giuseppe! You know, that's what you should do. Good Friday, go find a few good little pizzeria somewhere. Find a few Italians and go and quit kicking the butt for killing Jesus. Well, didn't they? Aren't they the, aren't the ancestors, they the descendants of the Romans from Italy? They're the ones who nailed them on the cross, aren't they? I'm joking, obviously. I'm not going to, Mr. Cavelli, I'm not going to, Mr. Barone, you're safe. It's the lack we love. I don't spit on your ancestors because they killed the Christ. <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? Pontius Pilate was a Roman. What do you, you know, what do you thought of? What, are you going to say no he wasn't? You know? Are we done? Are we done, Ms. Nichols? Or? You're cold. I'm just getting hot, baby! I know. I'm sorry. I knew I wouldn't. I should have never talked about electromagnetics. But, whatever. Cool picture of 
Okay, we have the test. Please bring the test up. I'll see you on Monday. Okay, so you have one day Sir, God bless you. I'm sorry. You did sub a hello. Mm. Okay, fine. Five minutes. Have a good week, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Credit out of ten. Huh? Do you have to credit out of ten? For what? Like the uh, yeah. yeah, out of ten. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir. Oh, sir. 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 Oh yeah, finish. Actually, um, I think there's a class in here afterwards. Do you mind coming up to the department and finishing there? Okay, thank you. A Bible? A catechism? I do not have a catechism, but I can let you use my computer. Thank you, Ms. Logan. Goodbye, thank you, Ms. Chan.